How did I even do that? Today on No Panic Pantry, we are making pesto. Now the classic way, the way before they invented food processors, was you do it in a mortar and pestle. It is better. But, um, come on, I'm not even doing that. I kind of want to show you that, yes, there are recipes, there are measurements, there are rough guidelines, but at the end of the day, what you're going to keep doing is what I do, which is you keep tasting it and you keep going, maybe a little more of this, maybe a little more of this, until you get it where you want it to be. So, it's about three tightly packed cups of basil. And this will be enough to make uh, a big bowl of a pound of pasta for everybody, and then have some left over to put in the fridge, or to do what I usually do, which is freeze some, because it freezes really well, and then when you think you're gonna want pesto, the next day you take it out, you put it in the fridge, let it defrost, boom. In fact, I already have some frozen, but it's not much of an episode if I just defrost it and eat it. So what I got here right now is about three tightly packed cups of basil. I've got four garlic cloves, Parmigiano Reggiano, pine nuts, and then I got about three quarter cups of olive oil here. I like a little lemon. It's not classic, but I do like it. That's pretty much it, salt and pepper. So the first thing I'm gonna do, peel and chop up some garlic. And you could just throw it right in the food processor, but I find that a rough chop just kinda helps you get it a little more consistent and you don't have to worry as much about kinda getting big chunks left behind. You get a little more control over your texture. I'm gonna give this a little pulse now. I like it to be a little bit coarse. So there's little bits of chunks in there still. It's not totally smooth. I'm not gonna use all the oil and all the cheese that I would use uh, with the pasta. because so I like to mix it together and then have more that gets wilted in uh, when you toss it with pasta. So now let's put all this basil in here. Nice healthy pinch of salt. And now we're just gonna pulse it. If you just held it down, you're gonna end up getting it to not really uh, combine very well. It kind of lifts it all up and a lot of it sits on the top. So we're just gonna keep pulsing it. I'll put a little bit of the olive oil in now. And so now we're getting a nice kind of coarse texture and now I can add a little more of the oil in. Some people like to just run it and pour the oil in and let it all kind of spin that way. Um, I don't need it to be this fully emulsified thing. I like it to be a little broken. And so now take a look, you've got some texture to it. It's not just this totally smooth thing. That's kind of where I want it to be, to be honest. Doing cups of Parmesan is always so confusing. If you use a microplane, the volume is very different. So if it's really airy and fluffy versus like a hard grate, it's just sort of the volume is very hard to gauge. So I just kind of try to go by taste and that tends to work pretty well for me. How did I even do that? This guy, I can get a little easier on it. A little more of this olive oil in here. And now we're just gonna fold all of this in together. It's good, it wants salt. And I, like I said, like a little lemon in it. Uh, if everything is kind of too intense, you can add a little more olive oil to it, which is never a bad thing. I think that whole three quarter cup is actually about where we want it. And now you're kind of looking for this glossy texture to it. I like it to be a little spicy from the garlic, like perfumey, spicy, creamy, all those kind of flavors. It's like extremes balancing out at the exact right time. When it's there, leave it alone. Ooh, yeah. You can be more mellow. Some people like they'll, you know, take the germ out of the garlic or they don't like to use too much. I want it to be like if you go on a date with someone and you make them this, that you both have to order it or else it's, uh, it's game over. I feel good about this. And the lemon really brightens it up. So you get fat, you get acid, you get heat from the garlic, you get bright, herby, minty, uh, floral kind of whatever we want to call those things. And that's it. Uh, if you didn't end up using all the pine nuts that you toasted, uh, you could throw them into a salad or you could just have a little free snack. So I like to cut these to their sort of, you know, what's the name of this size? 
Should we show them behind the scenes of what we're doing with our potatoes right now? Some people would say, why are you adding starch to starch? And I get it, but it's just kind of one of those things that exists in the world. It's like a classic thing and I kind of enjoy it. Uh, I was looking in the market and I saw some of these. Once you say it in front of a camera, it makes you really wonder whether you've ever known how to pronounce it. I just, I've always called it Jamelli. But now that I look at it and know that people are gonna be judging me, I might be wrong. This is my favorite of the mainstream available dried pastas out there. We're gonna wanna salt our pasta water. And if it was a vegetable, you salt it like the sea. With pasta, you salt it like a well-seasoned broth. Since we're doing both in the same pot, I will go more in the well-seasoned broth because you don't wanna overcook, over salt the pasta. The salt goes in the water. It's the only time you can get salt inside the noodle. And then how do you know if your pasta water is salted correctly? You taste it. Like it should kind of just taste good on its own. And then we'll put in the potatoes, we'll drain them, put them in the bowl. Green beans, drain them, put them in the bowl. And now, now you want to cook these until they're nice and al dente. Al dente meaning to the tooth, named of course after Albert Dente. All right, so now as always, uh, you want to save your pasta water. So if you don't have a handy scoop like this, take a mug, scoop some pasta water out and keep it on the ready, at the ready. And again, don't worry about draining it super fully for this part. A little bit of pasta water is going to get used anyway. So if some of it clings its way in, it might just get you all the way there. So now I'm going to take a nice portion of this. See when it starts to look a little dry like this is when that Pasta water kind of opens it up for you a little bit. And this is again, just kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. A little squeeze of lemon, a little more cheese, a little more olive oil. And so you can see also now that it's mixed together, that the pesto has a little more texture to it. And if you want it to be more of that smooth pesto, you can definitely do that. and make it more of that kind of smooth, creamy kind. And that would just mean blending it further, but I kind of like it a little rustic like this. You want that little bit of a shimmer on it. Who wants anything other than this ever? It's just one of the great, one of the great things in the world. And the potato really does give you this little secret earthy starch blast. And then the green beans kind of brighten it up. Eliza, you want to try some pesto? Here we go. I forgot to say that you're not a big pesto person. I'm, I am not a big pesto person. I'm just not. I would never order it like at a restaurant. It's really good. I'm sorry. Wait, let me do it right. Mmm. Kiss the chef. It's really good. What do you want from me? It's really good. And I like how it sticks in your teeth. <laughs> and I like that pasta shape. It's substantial, but it's light. What do you think about the little bit of potato in it? Oh, I thought it was cheese. I love it. There's a lot of cheese in there. <laughs> I don't know if it needs the potato. <laughs> I'm not a big potato person. What are you a big person of? I'm a big woman. You like a turkey slammer? I love a turkey slammer. Even if you don't like pesto. Even if you hate it. It's really good. Who hates pesto and clicks the video and then makes it? A lot of people. It's the internet. They're like, oh, I hate this thing. Let's see it. Click's a click. Got you. Right. It looks really good. It's really good. I love you. I love you. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> That's it. My man pesto, life is good. Bingo, bango, uh, Dodge Durango.